I went to a small country in Central America with some of my girls and had a love at first sight experience. I've never experienced it before in my life. Like it didn't really matter if I got married to this person. So I just went for it. So how does that play out? The opposite. It was it was really bad. Hello, Lyle. Hi, what is your name? Hey, um, my name's Ray. How's your Ray. Saturday so far? Uh, my Saturday's going uh fine. Uh, I'm in the. I, I'm always having an existential crisis. You know? Do you oh, ever no. have those? <laughs> All the time. What's your existential yeah. crisis about? Today? Well, it's just like I don't know what the point is of like doing anything. I know this sounds really uh depressing, but it's like um. I don't know. I'm gonna tell a story real quick. I've start. I'm gonna start um. Uh, I, I'm 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 having more fun actually now talking over callers and giving my thoughts. So I'm gonna do that to yeah, you right now. There's this um guy. So I used to be. I still am. I'm really into competitive Super Smash Brothers melee. Are you familiar with Super Smash Brothers? Yeah. And um, there's this guy I think about all the time. Is he's a player? He he's a professional Super Smash Brothers player. His name is Hungrybox. And um, he's been playing professional Super Smash Brothers Melee for uh, like f 15 years, something crazy like that. I don't know if it's exactly 15 years, but whatever. And um, he's been like, he hasn't been like number one the whole time, but I, for for at least like seven, six, five years, he was he was number one. He was the best player of all time. Okay, and 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 he's like his whole. He's a very competitive guy. And he just, he always wants to win the game. And I saw, I was watching a video of him winning a tournament from like 11 years ago or something like that. And when he wins the tournament, he, he pops off. He jumps out of his chair in excitement because he won the tournament. He's like so amped. He wants it so bad to win this tournament. He wants it so badly. And then I watched a video from like six months ago of him winning a tournament. And when he wins the tournament, just as he did 11 years ago, he pops off. He is filled with emotion. He's so happy that he won the tournament. He wanted it so bad. And I, I think about this guy often just because, like, I guess I don't understand this thing of, like, after being number one for 11 years, how do you still give a shit, you know? How do you still care so much about winning after you've won i mean this guy's won you know a hundred of these tournaments and he still wants to win so badly every time i guess I, I don't i don't understand you know how does that that deep um how does that desire stay so palpable for years and i'm thinking about this because i'm trying to figure out in my own life like what i give a shit about like what i care about and I have certain things that I've cared about for many years, um, and I'm just like I don't I don't know how I can see myself caring about this, you know, into my 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know. And I'm like, is that is that how, is that how life is supposed to be? Or are you supposed to kind of pick your things that you give a shit about? Like, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying right now? Definitely. Like, how do you keep the fire burning? Right. Um, I had this conversation with someone the other day, actually, and the way that he described it is like growth can kind of come through in different ways. As long as you keep growing, it doesn't really matter how. So, you know, sometimes it's good to take a break in the thing that's no longer, you know, on fire for you and just kind of grow in a different direction. Sorry, I just, hopped, to get I, I, just, I just well. hopped up to, sorry, I just hopped up to turn off uh, a space heater. Um, Fine. Yeah. Well, you've been experiencing this in your life. Well, how how have you how have you reinvented yourself? How have you um done this? Well, I I guess in terms of my career, I have been really questioning if I still also if I still care about it. Um, but I've been forced to kind of pick a different direction in my career because of my personal life. And I think with a lot of things that have been going on in my personal life, it's it's become impossible to care about my professional life in the same way. 
you know, I think different areas of our life can kind of drain a lot of energy out of us, make it harder to perform in other areas. So tell me what is going on in your personal life that is that has made you care less about the professional life? Well, uh, two years ago, I got married to a stranger on a girl's trip. I went to a small country in Central America with some of my girls and had a love at first sight experience. I've never experienced it before in my life. And I think in some way I thought it was kind of like it didn't really matter if I got married to this person. Um, but I never felt those feelings before. So I just went for it. And there were a lot of people in my life, you know, telling me probably shouldn't do this. What if he's like a serial killer or something? And I didn't listen to them because I'm, I, I was thinking like the chances of him being a, like a serial killer or some crazy person are, are there, but not that high, you know, I guess I meet, I meet a lot of strangers all the time and I was less afraid of it than I should have been. Um, but he turned out to be a total psychopath. Um, Actually, uh, you know, at a certain point, I, I, I went to live with him in that country. And it was okay, but I got a really bad feeling about it. So I came back to the U.S. where I live. And uh, he snuck into the country illegally. Uh, came here. And um, the situation just got really abusive, really bad. Um, in September of last year, he was arrested for strangling me. Um, so I led to a bunch of, you know, um, court cases or police investigations. Um, the feds got involved. I, I got the feds reach out to me. Um, so it was just so all consuming of my life and trying to figure out how to keep myself safe. Um, yeah, so I've reached this point. He, he was finally caught um, because he, he was released on bail for the strangulation and just went on the run. So he was finally caught um, and he's in a detention facility very far away from me now pending deportation. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely in this place. Like, I don't even know what I want to do with my life. You know, I came in so crazy and hot and now, uh, it's kind of left to pick up the pieces and try to figure out what I actually want. So where did you, where did you go in Central America where you met this guy? Uh, Belize. Belize. And how long yeah. were you there for? Uh, for the girls' trip, or uh, I guess like maybe two weeks total. And but then I came. How did you? I went how back. did you? How did you meet this guy? He was our tour guide for um, like a boat tour. They have a Great Barrier Reef out there. Mm -hmm. um, I actually met him before the tour. Um, it's so weird. We didn't really say that much to each other. It was just. I had an overwhelming, it felt like everything exploded in my body when I saw him. It's so weird to talk about. I've never had an experience like that before or since. Um, and he described the same thing. But, um, yeah, and then we just kind of, once we did start talking, we became inseparable. Mm -hmm. And um, so... You went back to Belize how soon after the trip? Just a couple of weeks after. And did by you not, myself, do you, which was Do you not crazy. have a, a job or anything that you like? Did you did you quit your job? Did you not have any place that needed your attention to be there? I did have a job. Um, I eventually I quit that job. 
um, which I, I also very much regret doing. It was a very crazy, impulsive decision. I think I was also kind of growing tired of the life that I had in, in the U.S. So it was appealing to escape to another place, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you got married to this guy. How soon after you met him? A couple weeks after I met him. And why did you decide to get married? Why not just hang out? Well, I, I actually thought about it. I was like, I'm either going to have to go home and just never talk to this guy again, just let it stay there, um, or I have to really commit to this happening. I think he also really drove that idea into my head of like, I had to, if I wanted to make something happen with him, I had to commit 100% or I had to just leave it behind me. Um, he was heavily pushing for marriage, which should have been a huge red flag. Um, how old are you I, and how old is he? I am 27. He's 26. Okay. And At the time, uh, I was 20, yeah. well, 25. Mm-hmm. Um, what do your girls think about this? Did they tell you not to do it after kind of being the only other people who knew anything about this guy? Um, they actually really liked him uh, at first. I didn't get any, you know, strong don't do it messages from them. Um, but other friends of mine at home and uh, in my family, of course, were, were not happy about it and told me that I shouldn't do it. But the girls on the trip were weirdly pretty supportive. Mm -hmm. And so the plan was just to, you know, abandon all of your life in America and move to Belize. What was it in America going on that was making you uh, so sick of being there that you wanted to just hail Mary over to Belize? I don't. I don't know if I really hated America. Um, I had a pretty comfortable life here. I think I was just, it was starting to feel monotonous. And I had such, what I felt like was such an exciting, appealing opportunity to leave the country and live a, a different kind of life. I think I just thought that the idea of something completely different really made me want to, try it out and how long did you stay in Belize married to this guy for a couple months maybe two months okay and were you living at his house were you living with his family yeah we had a place together did you have a job there did you like what I guess what were your plans for being there outside of just being with this guy um, I, I was, I was considering getting a job. I never did. I looked into a couple opportunities, but the pay was, it, it was pretty much nothing. Um, and I actually had some bills in the U S I had to take care of. Um, uh, so I realized pretty quickly I couldn't, like, there was no way I could really take care of my, myself, um, with any kind of job in Belize. Um, and he wasn't making enough money to even take care of, you know, our, our bills in Belize. So, um, I, I considered some remote work, you know, like working jobs that are in the U S but just doing it from Belize. And I kind of, I, I left with the decision, like, to just go back and forth, you know, um, find a job that I could work in the United States. Uh, and then maybe either hybrid remote or full-time remote work so I could go back and forth. Um, but there were a lot of red flags and his behavior was really erratic and scary. So I, I never actually went back to live there. 
And how did his behavior start to change? How did, he what did you, what did you start jealous. to notice? A lot of jealousy, uh, obsessive jealousy. Um, he was always very quick to apologize for behavior. If he, if he did something that was that really upset me or made me feel uncomfortable, he was at first really quick to apologize. And it, he just continued repeating the same behavior. So nothing changed. Um, but a lot of jealousy, like I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't really safe or comfortable to hang out with friends or, you know, go out and do anything without him calling, texting me over and over and over and over, and then getting very angry at me. Uh, he had my location tracked on, uh, we, we use different like apps, but he, he was very insistent on knowing exactly where I was all the time. Um, and he lied about pretty much everything. I started finding out as the relationship progressed that everything he told me about who he was, about his family, about his life was a lie. What kind of lies? Um, his age, <laughs> even his age. He lied to me about his age. Um, he claimed to have a really good relationship with his family and I met his family. Um, but that wasn't, it wasn't true. Um, he really, he really kind of painted this like fantasy life that he had and none of it was true. Um, How old did he say he was? He told me he was my age, but he was a year younger than me, which is such a small thing to lie about. And it didn't make sense. Um, okay. He told me that he had been, because I had been single for about three, maybe four years before I met him. And he told me he was also single for about three years before I met him. And then I found um, this girl had made like a Me Too post on Facebook about him. Uh, claiming that he had like hit her and that he was really abusive towards her and that he was cheating on her with me. Whoa. And, uh, yeah. And he told was this, me, was this another, was, was this crazy. another, was this another, um, uh, foreign, foreign woman or was this, was this a girl in Belize? Yeah. Yeah. She was a girl in Belize. Um, so he told me she was uh, just an ex-girlfriend from a long time ago and that she was really jealous and crazy. And even his family members told me the same thing. That she was crazy. They, they hadn't been together for so long. And then over time, slowly, it just kept eating at me because a lot of the things that she wrote about in her post started happening to me. Uh, she she talked a lot about how jealous he was and about how he started trying to control what she did and who she talked to. And the same way as she described it, it started happening to me. So I kind of kept pressing him about this girl. I was like, you know, and, and his answer changed every time. So it went from, oh, no, I haven't talked to her in three years to, oh, well, it's, it was like a couple months to... Oh, well, you know, she wanted us to stay together, but day, a couple of days before you and I met, uh, I broke things off with her. You know, it, the, the stories just kept changing over the weeks and months. And So when was it that you decided to leave Belize? Leave, that's a tongue um, twister, leave Belize. <laughs> I guess it, September. I left in September. And was uh, that and then, and that was after about two months of being there. You said, yeah, just about two months. And I'm I'm curious, what was it that kind of was like? All right, I got to leave. And then also, was it difficult to get out? Um, I was I actually had a trip to Italy planned um, to visit my best friend who lived there. So um, it, it was kind of a a decision of whether after that 
trip if, if I would go back to Belize or if I would go to the United States. Um, so I ended up going back to the United States after that trip. But um, he made it very difficult to leave. He didn't want me to go on this trip. Um, I'd planned it years in advance, but he was trying to stop me from going. He uh, told me he was going to hide my passport so that I couldn't leave. Um, so I actually, I slept with my passport on my person for days before I left. And then once I went on that trip, he did everything he could to try to make my trip miserable. He That's harassed sad. me. He harassed my friend. He just would call over and over and over and over. And I made it really clear that, you know, I, I tried to tell him, you know, we can talk for like an hour, maybe two hours in the mornings, but I need the rest of the time for like me and my friend. And if anything urgent comes up, just text me and I'll get back in touch with you. I shared my location with him the whole time, but um, it was, it wasn't enough for him. He, he seemed to think I was cheating on him the entire trip. So I didn't get a break from that. And when I finally was like, you know what, I can't do this and I like turn off my phone or block him or you know uh, just uh, silence his messages or notifications he would start with, he would make violent threats about me or my friend and did you go from Italy back to Belize or did you go straight from Italy back to the US I went straight back to the US I was like I can't deal with this guy anymore. What, did you have any like belongings that you had to leave behind in Belize? Um, none that I really cared about. I think I had some clothes okay. and some like toiletries, but uh, I I knew before I left on that trip that it, I was probably not going to come back. Yeah, I don't think it's worth going back to a crazy Belizean man for some shower gel. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not. Um, it, it, it got worse and worse to the point I'm I'm like, you know what, I, I need to divorce this guy. And uh, around the time I started talking to him about, you know, we, we need to get a divorce is when he um, I guess he had a contact in the cartel who was able to get him across into the U.S. Illegally. How did he find out where you lived? It was, uh, we had to put our addresses on our marriage certificate. He knew where I lived. Um, he was also constantly, like, he had access to my location. Um, he, he made me download certain apps that would share my location with him. So he knew where I was and where I would go. Mm hmm. And so he had a contact in the cartel. Did you have any idea that, did he ever talk about like the cartel or anything like that with you before? Uh, towards, towards the end when I was, um, when, when I was pretty sure I wanted to end things, uh, he mentioned that he had like killed people. Uh, he, he claimed to be like a gang leader in Belize. I didn't believe it because he didn't have any money, you know, but um, but he told a lot of kind of stories like that, either to scare me or he was kind of opening up about being involved in some bad things. Um, so it, it wasn't really surprising to me. I, I can't really talk too much about certain things because of some investigations that are going on. Um, but his family is really bad news. Um, so I was curious about your guys' marriage. I mean, like, what? How, how how legally binding was this thing now that you're back in the U.S.? Like, do they really give a fuck about, you know, Belizean? Uh, it's probably not how you say it. Belizean. Belize is a no, city, yeah, right? Belizean. It's Belizean? It sounds made up. I feel like I made that Oh, up. yeah, Belizean. No, Where, no, you got it. Belize is a country, right? It's not a city. I'm so dumb. Yeah. It's a country, right? 
Yeah, yeah, it's a country. Their main okay. city is Belize City, so. Oh, okay, so Same it's Belize, thing. Belize. Yeah. Belize, Belize. I was gonna, I was gonna say the city so nice they named it twice, but it sounds kind of like it was bad for you. <laughs> no, you're fine. There are um, some beautiful people in Belize, and I really love the culture and the music is great. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a great travel destination. I just maybe mm -hmm. wouldn't get married to a stranger if you if you decide to go. <laughs> Um, so now you are back in the States. Yeah. Uh, back in the are, States. And so what's, what happened with this marriage certificate? Like, is, I assume, I guess, how legally binding is it? Is there, is there, like, what's going on with it, I suppose? Like, the, 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 the legality of the marriage? It's a really good question. I've been trying to find out the answer. I, I can't really get a clear answer, um, Really, I mean, technically, you can get married anywhere in the world, and it's as long as it's legal in the place where you got married, the United States will recognize it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I mean, in the United States, am I married? I don't know. There were some documents that I had to fill out for him to start with, like, the green card process. Um, there's a document in particular that kind of claims him as a family member of mine. I never filled out any of those. Um, I, had a, I just had a really bad feeling about making sure on paper, you know, it, the U.S. government recognized him as a family member of mine. So I never filled any of that out. But mm -hmm. I don't really know if it's, I don't really know if it's legally binding. I would and assume... It is. Uh, so you left Belize in September. September of what year? 2022. 2022. Okay, so it's been uh, been a little bit. Yep. It's and are you still... Bit. He came into the U.S. in February of last year, 2023. Okay, let's talk about that. So he comes into the U.S. And what happens? Um, so he got caught at the border... I guess right after he crossed the border um, and border patrol or USCIS or whoever technically has to like call me to or have me fill out documents for me to be his sponsor but they didn't do that um, he was just kind of you know, he put me down as a sponsor. He had our marriage certificate with him. Um, and they shipped him over to where I live. I live in North Carolina. Um, so they shipped him here and I took him in. He claims that he was um, scared for his life in Belize. He claimed that people were trying to kill him. But the story also kept changing over and over and over again. So, so he just, he just kind of shows on. up at your door. Yeah. Well, I picked him up from the airport, but yeah, he called me like I'm here and I have nowhere else to go. And were you, were, you know, and this was after he had made these violent threats against you and your friend? Yeah. Were you, were you skeptical? Were you afraid of, 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 of this guy at that point? Yeah, definitely. Um, I thought if he was here... You know, I kind of, I had a little bit more, in my head, I had a little bit more of an upper hand than when we were in Belize, because I didn't know anybody else in Belize, and I was kind of totally at his mercy there. But the way I was thinking about it was like, well, here I have friends, you know, this is my home, like I know how things are done here, and he's showing up with kind of you know, no idea what's going on and um, how to live here. And he, he made it very much like, you know, I was all he had. So I thought things were probably going to calm down and that he wasn't going to be uh, as aggressive or abusive as he had been, which is very naive to think, but I, I thought maybe it wouldn't be so bad. So how does that play out? 
The opposite. Yeah. The opposite. It was it was really bad. Uh, he started being physically violent about three weeks after he got here. Um, and that was pretty much a weekly thing until he left. Um, I, I, it's, a, it's a miracle I kept my job because um, I had a new job at the time. Um, but yeah, there were times I, I started getting really bad migraines. Um, I wasn't, I, I pretty much had no relationship with my friends. Um, I, I couldn't really like leave the house or go out and do anything unless he was with me. Um, so w- uh- how, how does this eventually end? Like, how does how does he get out of the picture? He um, he strangled me, uh, and I thought I was going to die. It was pretty bad. Um, like I urinated all over myself, and it was really bad. Um, so I went to um, I actually just went to an urgent care. Like I ran and went to an urgent care. And they filed a police report and the police um, finally followed up with me. And as I was taking the report, um, he was calling me over and over and over and over again. So one of the police officers told me to answer his call, put it on speaker and not tell him that they were there. And uh, my husband just confessed everything. So they... They got him and arrested him, um, but they almost immediately, like after two weeks maybe, um, released him on bail, and then he went on the run. And uh, from that point, he was sending me multiple death threats. Um, he like video called me, pointed a gun at the camera, told me I was dead. Um, a lot of things to try to scare me, but, um, his, his violence as we were living together kept escalating. So at that point, I really believed that he, he might hurt me. Um, I was really lucky to have some friends that were still kind of waiting, (laughs) waiting for me to come back and ready to help. Um, what happened to him where is he now do we know yeah they caught him um he's in a a detention facility in in another state um yeah they they, i i guess he was arrested on a domestic violence call in tennessee um and then they they kind of got him and um sent him to to a different uh, facility to wait deportation. So he's in jail and he's going to get deported back into Belize. Yeah. And he has he contacted you since, or do you have him blocked? Um. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't have a cell phone, which is nice. Um. He doesn't really have a way to contact me. His family members have been kind of sending me threats sporadically. I randomly get you know, a call from a Belizean number. I just have to block. Um, but it's been quiet for a while, for a couple months now. It's been really quiet. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Which is nice. So, but now it's, you know, it's weird to go from something so intense to just regular life again. I don't know what normal regular life really looks like. I mean, yeah, this is... Uh... This is pretty crazy. This is very, yeah. very crazy story that you're telling us right now. Yeah. It's 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 hard and very weird to kind of go back to a normal or try to you know, figure out what normal is. And you're in North Carolina right now. I am. And do do, do you still have that job? Uh I've gone through a couple jobs. Um, I just started a brand new one. 
uh, just, just kind of for safety reasons. I, he knew where I was working before, so I started a new one. Mm, and do you like that job? Yeah, yeah. I, I love the people I work with. Um, I kind of wish I was able to contribute more or I guess be more focused. It's been hard to... I, I hear some people say that they're able to just drown themselves in work to avoid thinking about anything else. Oh yeah. I really envy people who can do that. I can't. I, I wish I had more of that. You um, know, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, man. I think, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how like normal human beings like live their life and stuff, but I, I, I always kind of think that, um, and I don't even know what a normal human being looks like, or I guess, I guess I do. I have in my head what a normal human being is like, but, um, I think there's a lot of like drowning yourself in stuff, you know, whether it's whether you're unlucky enough for it to be, you know, drugs and alcohol or if it's work or or even or even if it's spending time with family and friends, you know, or <laughs> or winning Super Smash Brothers tournaments. Everyone's kind of drowning right. themselves in something. Um because that's, I guess, that's what life is: is you pick something to drown yourself in to prevent yourself from going insane, and then you die. And uh, if you're lucky, you've chosen to drown yourself in the warmth of your friends and family. And if if not, you know, you pick something else. Um, but again, I don't, I don't know how how normal human beings operate. Um, but that's that's how I imagine it to be. Yeah, that would be nice to, to drown your life in that. Uh, what do you what do you what do you desire to do next? What's on what's on the uh, on the docket for you? I don't know. It's gotten it's gotten really difficult to look forward and imagine a future. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'd like to relocate. Um, I'm, I'm kind of okay here for now, but I, it would be nice to go somewhere else in a different state where, you know, nobody can find me and um, just kind of start fresh there, start new. Would you consider leaving Make the country again? Yes. Not Belize. But not Belize. Definitely not somewhere Belize. Somewhere else. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Probably nowhere in Central America. I think yeah, I'm good on yeah. Central America for a while. I think, I think you're good on Central America for a while, too. I think you've seen it. You had the food. Yeah. It was good. You can check it off on your little map list. Probably good for oh, yeah. Belize for the rest of your life, I would say. Yep. Depending on depending on how, um, how high quality that shower gel you left there was. If it was the really good stuff, then maybe you make a trip back to Belize. But if, if it was kind of just like something you picked up at Walgreens, then, you know, you can leave it. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think the, the shower gel quality in Belize is much better than in the United States. I think we've right. got some good stuff here. I'll be right. okay. Um, well, that's a tough thing. I think about that all the time. I think about, like, life restarts and... Um, I've talked to a lot of people, uh, when, you know, when I've been abroad who've who've restarted their lives, and you know, I've thought about doing it myself, and it's it's a fascinating um, idea. I mean, you kind of, and and it's hard because you kind of tried to do it, and it it just went really poorly. And I I don't know if that should necessarily. Yeah. I, I think I don't know if that should discourage you from trying to do it again maybe you know you've you've learned some safety tips you know as to how you could do it again but not you know have it be such a a, a crazy a crazy thing um but uh I, you know i would keep that courage that you have whatever the courage was that you know caught wanted made you you know be like okay i'm gonna take a a, a nice leap with my life right um but you know, we 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 hone it in, we we adjust it, so it's like okay, you know, we're gonna have the courage to go out into a new place and and make new connections and whatnot. But you know, we've learned maybe we don't you know sign any any marriage certificates or or do anything super crazy. But 
something, doing something just crazy enough that it, you know, propels you into this, this new place that you want to be, you know? Yeah, like get really into some crazy hobby, like skydiving yeah. or something. Ah, uh, not yeah. skydiving. You, sky, <laughs> you're going to... Don't, don't, not skydiving. I mean, I don't know. Skydiving is probably safer than driving a car. I personally, I mean, I watch videos all day of, of horrible um, skydiving accidents on Twitter. And so I'm, I'm biased against oh. it. But, um, you know, uh, it's... I, Any I, extreme I, sports. I don't like extreme sports. I don't think it's worth, you know, don't get, I don't like things where you can get all fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why don't you, why don't you move to China and start a knitting club and it's just you and you know the people of china and you're and you're knitting that could be fun that sounds lovely that sounds lovely yeah i'll have to learn how to knit but that's a good idea go off to some like french countryside and learn how to make uh you know french dishes yeah might be cool yeah. Yeah, don't that's I guess what I'm try, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I hope you don't lose your sense of adventure and sense of um you know desire to keep evolving and changing but that but and so don't lose that. You know, don't let this horrible experience, you know, um totally freeze you up to the point where you don't want to go out and live your life anymore, right? We don't want that to happen. But, you know, but the, but but take that sense and, you know, don't let it erode, but also don't let it, you know, steer you into, un, you know, uh, the, the, the bad places. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it takes some time, too, for healing. I, I haven't really spent a whole lot of time in between adventures, I guess, focusing on healing myself and making sure. myself you know, stronger before jumping sure. into the next thing. Sure, sure, sure. So um, I think that healing can be an adventure in itself sometimes. I like that. I like that. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna take that. I'm going to take that from you. <laughs> healing can be an adventure in and of itself sometimes. I'm going to take that. I like that. Sometimes it's the hardest one. Sometimes it's the scariest one, but it's one of the most important ones. What's your name again? Uh, Ray. Ray. Well, Ray. Ray, thanks for sharing your tale with us. I hope it was helpful to talk about. I, you know, you know what? I bet somebody will listen to this podcast, and um, you, you'll, you, maybe you'll, you'll get them to think twice about their, um, you know, crazy foreign marriage adventure that they might be embarking on. That was my hope. That's the plan. Thank you so much for having me, Lyle. Of course. Any final words for the people at the computer before we go? Um, just think twice before doing anything crazy. Take care, Reb. Thank you so much. Bye. You know, at the beginning of Ray's call, I was telling her that I was in a an existential crisis mode, and I am. And uh, I, whenever I get into an existential crisis mode, my first instinct is like, okay, well, I'm not getting any younger and I have this job that only only, a, only a, every so often requires me to actually, you know, be in a physical location. And so why don't I go to Thailand for a little bit, you know, and, and see what the fuck happens. And um, I'm, I do think I'm going to do that. I do think it's important to do those things. But I am inspired by uh, Ray's words of maybe, you know, healing and, and uh, overcoming and uh, reinventing and... And uh, uh, t tacking on, you know, the issues you actually have in your home are, are an adventure in and of themselves. And so I'm going to think about that. And what wh wh what would you know? As it's it's my favorite thing in in this podcast is is um when when the therapy gecko gets therapy geckoed. So thank you very much, Ray. Hello. Hi there. What's your name? Oh. I, my name is Mia. I was at your Syracuse show a few days ago. Why are you, t are, why are you talking like that? You're like doing a bit. I have no idea. I think okay. I'm kind of like a little, I don't want to say a little autistic because people don't like when that's you okay. say no, that. No, no, that's okay. Like, that's okay. You know, I think I might be a little bit. 
That's okay. That's totally okay. I just, I, I just, I, the only, I didn't say that. I, I promise you, I wasn't saying that to be a dick. I just, I was saying that because oh, I was like, no. you were, you don't have to do no. that. You can, we can just talk. It's okay. Oh, it takes a lot to bother me, honestly. So you're fine. Okay. I was, I really, I didn't mean to offend you. I just wanted to tell you, like, no. you don't have to, because I think some people think they have to like do a put Act. on, and you don't. You could just be, be whoever you oh, are. It's no. okay. No, I'm just naturally strange. I'm sorry about that. No, you no, 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 no. Don't, don't be just as long as you're being naturally whatever you are. You have nothing to apologize for. Um, oh yeah. Anyway, uh, Mia, you yes, you 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 mentioned to me over over this text that you were at my Syracuse show a few nights ago. Shout out to Syracuse. Had a really fun time this week. Uh, Syracuse, Albany, Hartford, Connecticut, doing shows. Uh, TherapyGeckoTour.com. Go check it out. Um, but anyway, you said you broke up with your boyfriend after the show. Was he at... Did, I'm wondering, was the show like a catalyst for this breakup? Oh, so, uh, not necessarily. I mean, it was like a couple days after, um, but not long after. Um, you know, I feel I feel like a bitch. And I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, am I the asshole? Um, I might be. I might well, be. Well, tell, tell, um, tell, tell, tell us what happens if you if you want to. So, me and my boyfriend, uh, we met on TikTok. It's very, very strange way to meet. And he lives in Michigan. And, oh, God, I, he flew out here. He was supposed to stay till frickin' woo, till Tuesday. And, uh, <laughs> I should not be laughing. This is not funny. Go it's ahead. very sad. Go um, I, I laugh at sadness. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we were, we were playing these cards that were, that are like, oh, let, let's get closer. Couples edition. Oh yeah, no, I know what you said. The 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 whole like, uh, here's some questions to build intimacy, kind of cards. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of went like the opposite direction. Uh, okay, I was just kind of like, you know, I do this thing where it's like in every relationship, I kind of lie to myself after a while, which mm -hmm. is totally not intentional. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm in love. This is great. This is going to be the rest of my life. Sure. And then there's just kind of like this impending cloud of doom, like, oh, no, this is going to be the rest of my life. Yeah. And uh, then I kind of start freaking out. Right. It's not that I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. So, you know, it's kind of like, oh, what's going on? You seem a little upset. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not feeling it, you know, and it was just, it was just like this downward spiral. And I paid for him to fly home that day. <laughs> that, you hold, know? On, that is, hold on, hold on, that is funny. Like, oh, it, it's, it's so bad because, like, he didn't do anything wrong. That's okay. That's okay. You don't, you don't have to. They don't have to. It's not. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't. You know. It doesn't have to be sad. Hold on. Okay. All right. Well, can I? Can I just real quick? Me. I, let me. Let's rein all of this in real quick. Okay. So here's how I understand this. All right. So, all right, so you went to the show uh, with with this guy that you met on TikTok. Was he your boyfriend, or was he just like a guy that you kind of met for the first time on off of TikTok? Uh, so we met on TikTok, but we had meeting up in person like twice before. Okay. So this was like third times a charm. All right. So you, you, do you, so he flies from Michigan to Syracuse. You guys, was he, were you both at the show? Yeah. Did I meet you guys? Picture. Yeah, we have a picture with you. We were like one of the last in line. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Can you send me this picture? I want to see if I remember your faces. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so I just text it to you? Yeah, just text it to this phone number. Um, well, I'll, I'll talk to, I'll talk to you while you're doing it. Um, because so I, 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 it's recent enough that I remember your faces. I, maybe. Um, but anyway, okay, so you, so he flies out from Michigan to Syracuse. 
uh, to hang out with you, yeah. go to the show. Uh, and how long is he in Syracuse for? So at that, oh God, that was the first day. So he flies in, goes to the show. Okay, he sent the picture. Right, hold on, let me, let me let me see if I remember you guys. Okay, wait a minute. Oh wait, I told I absolutely <laughs> wait. Hold on, hold on. Is his name? I don't want to dox him, Brandon. Let's cut. All right, Brandon. Let's if we can mute this name from the podcast because I don't want to dox him. But tell me if I was right. Is was his name? Yeah. Ah, fuck yeah. The fuck all of you guys who think I don't remember anyone's name because I fucking remember this guy's name. Hell yeah. Oh, he got it. You got I it. I got it. I fucking got it. I'm actually, I actually am so stoked about that because you. you you. if you listen to this show, you'll listen to me ask people's name about a hundred fucking times. But yes, no, I remember this guy. No, I remember this guy. He had a he had a vibe going to him. Both both both, both yeah. you guys had a, had a little vibe going. Yeah. Oh. No, I, I, I do remember you guys, yeah. It's just like, man, he didn't do anything wrong. You know, I don't know, maybe you don't know, but just kind of like, not to sound corny, but the, the the vibe is there, or it's not there. And we very much, you know, connected as friends, but there, the romance, it was dead. I remembered his name like, because he, he he just looks like his name. He looks like his name. Anyway, yeah. um, listen, Mia. I don't think um, okay. You plan you paying for him to fly home that day. It is funny. Okay, you don't have to feel bad about. I mean, you don't have to feel bad about it because it is it and, is funny. But but here's the thing. Like, I don't think there's anything. There's nothing wrong with uh, just be making this decision of like you know what, eh, it's not there. Eh, we don't have to waste time. We don't have to, you know, uh, uh, hang out in Syracuse for another week while we're not feeling it. And just, just uh, go home, uh, lick the wounds, and we'll we'll move on. We'll figure it out. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, yeah, it's just, like I totally would have waited till after the trip. Like I did not plan to do this. That's why I feel like an asshole. Because it's like, damn. I couldn't have like waited till after. Yeah, why wait? Why wait? What, what, what was going to happen? But, you decided you didn't like him. What what was that week going to look like? That wasn't going to be a fun week for either of you. That was only going to that was only going to get worse, right? Because you were going to be feeling slowly, slowly more and more as though you were getting trapped into a thing that you didn't even want to be in. And he was going to start. He was going to get more and more excited and happy and and more invested. And it was, it was just not going to be a good thing. So you know, I don't think there was anything wrong with. Um, being, you know, being honest and sending him home and being yeah. like, you know what, this wasn't going to work. It was only going to get worse. You know, you actually did the right thing, yeah. I think, because you, you ended it uh, before before it got worse. And he's like, let me pay you back for the plane ticket. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> no. But this is, this is. It was honestly, honestly, kind, kind, it, it's still very funny, but kind of you to pay for the plane ticket back. Uh, well, it's like, you know, do we sit there like, four days in awkwardness right. and then it's right. like right. let's right. make you know let's make it work it's like no right. it's dead no. did you pack him a Ooh. lunch and give him an apple juice for the flight no you know I didn't do that and I do feel bad I could have you know, um, I can cook oh what was I going to say oh what was the card that made you um, decide that it wasn't going to work Oh, God. Well, you know, it was kind of like one after the other, like, questions, like, like, <laughs> I should not be laughing. See, this is what how I feel like an asshole. I just, I laugh to deal with things. I do genuinely feel so bad because he's a great guy, great friend. Just he was, he was but, a nice you know, dude. I liked, I liked, I just remember he had a good vibe. Yeah. It's like questions like, what, what made me fall in love with you do you remember the moment i fell in love with you and i was like oh god not really it's like am i supposed to you know i mean you just met the guy for the second time well but still how 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 long were you guys chatting on on the tiktok for oh well i think 
I'm bad at timelines. We've known each other for like a bit over a year. Okay. We talked on TikTok for a little bit. Went over to Snapchat. Kind of weird. But like just talked on Snapchat and just continuously talked every day. And then like I want to say after being friends for like six months or more, we were like, let's try to date. But I said I wasn't going to like date him till I met him in person. That, you know, that's a reasonable we, request. That's a reasonable request. Yeah. It's like, I'm not going to call you my boyfriend before I meet you in person, even though I think I like you. Does he, is he, so you guys both came to my show. Does he also listen to this podcast? I assume he's going to hear this. You know, I don't know if he really does. I think he sees like the clips on like okay. Instagram and stuff. He's probably too depressed right now to be doing this. Look, if he's here, look, because here, I've met this guy, all right? So here's, let me, and I only knew him for two seconds, but uh, let me just, if he's listening to this, uh, I'm not going to say his name again because we already said it. We're going to bleep it once, but um, if you're listening to this, okay, listen, you, I remember you, you had a lot of swag. I'm looking at a picture of you right now. You're a swaggy guy. You're, you got, you know, cool hair. You got a good vibe. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. I'm going to call, I'm going to give him a fake name so I can address him. I'm going to call him... Uh, John. John, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine, John. Um, you know, you'll go, you'll find someone else. Please forgive Pro- me, maybe. John. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. He'll bounce you know, back. And I kind of feel like it's a me problem in a way. Not to be like the whole cliche, oh, it's not you, it's me. But this this feels like it happens in all of my relationships, and, and I do try to like take it slow, you know. I do try to pace myself, make sure I like them, and then it's like all of a sudden, in the middle of stuff, I'm like, uh oh, who is this guy? Not really, who is this guy? But it's like, no, you're right. You're you're sitting, in, you're laying in bed. You're looking at him, and you're like, who's this random guy in my bed? Yeah. Like, yeah. is this is this the rest of my life? That's every, that's every, yeah. that's, that's everyone's worst nightmare. That's really everyone's yeah. absolute worst nightmare. Both, both a, a guy and a girl. If you're a guy, there's nothing worse than when, if you're like in uh, bed with someone you've been dating, and you can tell that they just looked at you and they were like, who is this stranger in my bed right now? And then for you as well, you, you look at them. You're like, "Why? This is insane. We're just we don't even." You could be you could be dating someone for like five years, and look at them and be like, "Who's this, this fucking guy in my house?" You know? Yeah, it's terrifying. Like, I've had, you know, I'm I'm 27. I'm not I'm not super old. I'm not super young anymore. But it's like, mm. you know, I don't. Mm, I'm kind of like, should I just not? can date people anymore you know I, I feel like this is a family curse i had a uncle who passed away in like his early 60s and he was kind of like a player um and i feel like him like he always tried to have a girlfriend and like even this one girl her name was tammy and and my uncle michael and tammy they had a freaking vibe going she was sweet. She was cool. And the, like, main reason why they broke up was because she had a fucking dog. Like, because my uncle was, like, anal about everything. And he's like, oh, the dog's going to get hair everywhere. And it's like, I feel, I feel like him. I feel like yeah. we have this, this curse. Yeah. Like, Jesus. Yeah. I've, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to say this because... I'm trying to be I'm trying to be more authentic on here. I kind of have that curse too. And um yeah. it, I'm not I'm going to be honest with you. It's I I think it's bad. I I I would I would refer to it as a curse. I would definitely refer to it as a curse. Um you know, and it Sorry, I'm not trying to cut you off here. Cut, cut me off. I, I go ahead. No, it it just like I get really into my thoughts about it and I'm like Am, am I the weird one, or are a bunch of other people lying to themselves? <laughs> like, d- does that make sense? Like, 
like maybe maybe all these other people are just like pretending and feeling weird but just they're miserable in their relationship and not talking about it buddy, and that's why buddy fuck if i know fuck if i know i don't know i don't know who's happy and who's not happy i mean there's, they don't there's, have the guts to say it i mean look there's four kinds of people right there's people who are happy in their relationships People who are unhappy in their relationships, people who are happy being single, and people who are unhappy being single. And uh, all of those uh, people um, uh, uh, exist in the universe. And uh, I don't know what necessarily differentiates them. I don't know what the X factors are, but, uh, you know, choose your character, mate. Yeah. It's just... I think I got to stop trying... And I just, I don't know if it, if it can be achieved. I think, you know, I think it's all in my head that something's going to be good. And then it is not. It's not good at all. Well, don't, don't beat yourself up, Mia. It was nice of you to pay for that guy's flight. Did you send him home first class? That would have been really funny. See about that. We, we didn't go that far. Did you at least send him Southwest A boarding group? I know he was on Southwest. I don't know about the group. Oh no! You sent him home in the C boy. He got he had to sit in a middle seat between a baby and a fat guy. I know his flight got delayed. He did get home at like one in the morning. Damn. And it was pretty quick. Like we broke up, and then he got on the flight like three hours later. I'm like, damn, this this happened real fast. This was not in the itinerary. Well, Mia, I mean, don't feel, don't. You know, what, I, I, I'll say, I'll say one more time before we go. I think, I think, <laughs> you know, I, I honestly, I respect the genuineness by which you went around, by which you went through the situation, because you know, you didn't want to drag it out. A lot of people will drag it out out of fear, you know, because um, a lot of people, by the way, a lot of people have this curse that you're referring to. And uh, yeah. a lot of those people do not have the courage to um, uh, admit it, and so they'll drag it out, right? Um, so don't 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 feel too bad. Don't feel too bad. It was nice of you to pay for this guy's flight. Um, thanks, but thanks again for coming to the Syracuse show. That was fun. Remember the guy who called his dad to tell him he drank his piss? That was an oh, all timer. That, that was my favorite part. Listen, if the cannibal girl is listening, I'm sorry. That was. That was kind of cringy, kind of, kind of out there. I don't know how serious she was, but I'm just scared. But uh, the pee part was my favorite, and it was a great time. You did a great job. Uh, folks listening, go to therapygeckotour.com to RSVP for when I come to your city or to go to, you know, something to go to one of the shows. Anyway, um, Mia, thanks for calling. Uh, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? You know, guys, don't think I'm an asshole, you know? I can't pretend I can't hide. If I could, I would have. But that might have been worse. So hopefully I've got some supporters out there. And definitely go to the Therapy Gecko show. It was worth it. It should not end your relationship. So. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thanks, Mia. Well, thank you. Bye bye. Actually, it's kind of funny. So I did a show. Um, oh my god, was it last? No, it's two nights ago. I did a show in uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Shout out Hartford, Connecticut. And this couple came on stage because this woman um, submitted an entry to come on stage, saying that uh, her she almost broke up with her boyfriend uh, when they went to my show in New York. Because her boyfriend like didn't want her because she tried she tried to wear a gecko costume to the uh, show and her boyfriend wouldn't let her and uh, because be, and the reason why is because he said there can only be one gecko and he was like trying to he was trying to like defend my honor. Um, but they, they are still together anyway. Thanks. Thanks for, uh, thanks for calling Mia. Yeah.